Vesak is the major Buddhist festival commemorating the birth, enlightenment, and the nirvana of Sakyamuni Buddha. In July 2006, the headquarter of UNESCO celebrated its first Vesak, commemorating Buddha's 2550th birthday. Pure Land Learning College was invited to join in hosting the event. The president of the college, Venerable Professor Jing Kong, was delighted to accept the invitation. He wanted to use this opportunity to prove to all who know him that both Singapore and Indonesia have now succeeded in uniting the major religions in their countries, that different religions can work together in a cooperative spirit, and also the fact that it only took one year for the school he founded in Tangshu to prove that people can be taught to be better people. Therefore, it is entirely possible for us to resolve all conflicts and to restore peace back into our society and our world. During the opening ceremony, the representative of the nine major religions from Singapore held hands and sincerely prayed together for world peace. Even though the violent conflicts continue among different religions around the world, the nine major religions from Singapore unite as one family, which proves that religions can unite and cooperate with each other. Both the Director General of UNESCO, Mr. Koichiro Matsuura, and the Deputy Permanent Delegate of Thailand to UNESCO, Dr. Priyanuk Jariyavidyanot, gave their speech and their best wishes to this conference, hoping their words of peace would be spread to all corners of the world. Mr. President of the General Conference, Venerable Guests, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to inaugurate at UNESCO headquarters the celebration of the 2,500, I'm sorry, 2,550th anniversary of the Buddha. Let me first convey my warm greetings to the hundreds of millions of followers of the enlightened one around the world, as well as to all those who share the core values of compassion, mutual respect, and peace embodied in his teachings. I would also like to express my gratitude to the organizers of this three-day celebration, permanent delegation of the Kingdom of Thailand to UNESCO, the World Fellowship of Buddhists, the World Buddhist University, and the Pure Land Learning College of Australia. Let me further thank all the other permanent delegations who have contributed to this event. In addition to cultural festivities, these anniversary celebrations will also be marked by an international symposium on Buddhism, development, and the role of religion in peace. Allow me to extend a special welcome to the dis His Excellency Kojiro Masura, Director General of UNESCO. His Excellency Dr. Musa bin Shafa uh, bin Hassan, President of the General Conference of UNESCO. His Excellency Sang Jinsheng, President of the Executive Board of UNESCO. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to welcome you on, on behalf of the permanent delegations of Thailand to UNESCO. As the official coordinator of the 2550 anniversary of the Buddha at UNESCO, I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the, His Excellency Kojiro Masura, Director General of UNESCO, and other distinguished guests to this opening session of the celebration. I am also pleased to welcome the Buddhist leaders of 
attested to UNESCO. We are today commemorate the 2550th anniversary of the Buddha, Sakyamuni Gautama, who founded Buddhist religion, and we consider him as a foremost humanist in the human history. It is not any exaggeration to say that the 45 years of teaching of the Buddha have been influenced to lives of several million and million of the people in this planet Earth. Mr. Director General, I am very glad to see your presence in this illustrious gathering, as well as our President of the General Conference, together with Buddhist leaders and distinguished delegates coming from four corners of the world to celebrate. Kachiro Matsudra, Dear Amil UNESCO, Saadat Naib al Mandub al Daim al Thailand, Azumala Munazumi, Hadal Ahtifal al Kabir, Al Ulama, Rajal al Deen, Al Asatida, Sayyidati Sadati. Inna al Yom. وفي هذا اللقاء التاريخي الكبير الذي نتذكر فيه رجل عظيم وهب حياته من أجل الإنسانية ذكرى 2550 سنة على ميلاد بوذا إن هذا اليوم إن هذا اللقاء بمشاركة رجال来自世界各地的专家学者诸位女士好好的来教所以人民确实能够教得好的 Both historically and in more recent times I am particularly pleased to learn that Australian Buddhists have contributed to the development and presentation of the conference under the leadership of the Venerable Master Ching Kung A.M., Vice-Chancellor of Pure Land Learning College in Toowoomba, Queensland. Australia is a peaceful, harmonious and inclusive nation that respects the rights of citizens to maintain and develop their cultural and religious beliefs in an Australian context. The Buddhist community is held in high regard in Australia due to its long-standing commitment to strengthening community relations through the promotion of interfaith understanding. I send greetings of peace and goodwill to all those attending the conference. Prime Minister of Australia, John Howard. Thank you. Your Excellency, Dr. Musa Hassan, President of General Conference, your Excellency, all the leaders of the major religions and the representatives of the major religions of the world. Your Excellency, Ambassador of Thailand to France and the permanent delegation to UNESCO. Your Excellency, Mr. Jean Guigneau, Ambassador and permanent delegate of France to UNESCO. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank you for inviting me to this opening session of celebration of 2550th anniversary 
of Buddha, Sikyamuni Gautama. It is not only an honor for me, but also a great pleasure to have this opportunity to be together with you. After the opening speech, Venerable Professor Jing Kong presented the Great Buddhist Canon, Qianlong Edition, as his gift to all the honorable guests and each of the respective religious representatives. This particular edition is also called the Long Canon. This edition of the Great Canon contains the complete series of Buddhist teachings compiled and edited by a group of selected great Buddhist masters under the direct order of Emperor Qianlong of the Qing Dynasty. The timeless value of his teaching. We thus observe the Vizak day which sacrifices his birth, enlightenment, and Parinipana as World Meditation Days in order to remind us of the way of peace of the Lord Buddha. It is a source of gratification that the organizing committees here will hold the commemorable event on the 7th to the 9th October this year, which would promote our awareness on the exemplar of the Lord Buddha and the merit of the 150th anniversary celebration of the Buddha at the UNESCO. As Buddhists, we are grateful to the Buddha and his teaching, which protect us from all evils and enable us to live in peace with other world beings. Hence, in place of the Buddha, we celebrate his birth, enlightenment, and passing away in the Visak Day, which is the World Meditation Day as initiated by the World Fellowship of Buddhists. The World Buddhist University, the academic division of the World Fellowship of Buddhists, is well aware of For vous exprimer toute ma joie, et mon bonheur de vous voir tous ici réunis à l'UNESCO pour répondre à l'appel du 2550e anniversaire du Bouddha Sakyamuni Gautama. C'est dire la force et la vivacité du bouddhisme. During the first day of the conference, Venerable Dharmaratana hosted two panel discussions on the topic of Buddhist contributions to human culture and development. The following participants were included. Professor Pasadika of Philips University from Germany. Professor Chenet of University of Paris for Sorbonne from France. Director and Reverend Thich Nhat Hanh of the Center of Plum Village from France. Director and Dr. Bhattachara of CNRS from France. Director and Professor To Sui Hin of the Griffith University Multi-Faith Center from Australia. They told the audience about their personal research findings. Venerable members of the Sangha, Your Eminences, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about uh, Buddhist social ethics as a contribution towards world peace. A few years back, at an international conference on topics of religious studies and religious history, it was stated that social ethics originated from modern times with religious circles in Europe ushered in by the worldwide industrial revolution. However, taking into consideration facts of religious history and by reflecting upon the meaning of social ethics, the science of moral... Breath out, I allow my body to release all the tension in it. Dear friends, you are invited to enjoy your brief. Toi, le Bouddhisme place l'homme au premier plan. Le Bouddha, à qui le rend hommage aujourd'hui avec des fleurs de l'encens, n'est pas un dieu, mais un homme. Seulement un homme parfaitement éveillé, Manusabuto Sambuddho, 
et veiller à sa véritable condition d'homme. Il est so many other faiths, communities here, and all the excellencies and representatives of UNESCO delegations, and all friends within the Buddhist community and also from other communities as well. I'm also greatly humbled to be part of a panel of very respected venerables and eminent scholars of Buddhism. Uh, my reflections, the few reflections I hope to share. The outstanding speeches given by the above six speakers help the audience gain a much deeper understanding of the history of Buddhism, as well as its contribution to human culture and development for the past 2,000 years. The first day of the conference concluded with an evening of entertainment, including traditional songs and dances performed by various groups of representatives from Thailand, China, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. The second day of the conference opened with Venerable Dharmaratana introducing Dean and Professor Guruge of the University of the West from the United States. Dean Guruge gave his speech on the topic of Buddhist contributions to the world. Dean Guruge told the audience how Sakyamuni Buddha used ascetic practices to curb his thoughts of greed and how his disciples were taught and influenced by his speech and conduct. For the past thousands of years, Buddha's disciples have used the same teaching methods to pass on and promote Buddha's teachings, which have exerted great influence over the whole of Asian cultures and traditions. Sakyamuni Buddha is our best example in demonstrating how we should always live by the precepts and let human sufferings be our teacher, and how we should treat self-cultivation as our fundamental duty to ourselves, while teaching is our foremost obligation to humanity. Venerable members of the Sangha and clergy, dear friends, I very carefully listen whenever I am introduced to find out the way that they are going to announce what I am going to do. There are times when the person says, now Dr. Guruge will come and give his address. I look for that opportunity. Because then all I have to do is to stand before you and say, ladies and gentlemen, my address is 8351 Snowbird Road, Huntington Beach, California. Then I also have another opportunity to be given... After the discussion panels, other UNESCO representatives from various countries presented their speeches for this unprecedented religious event held by UNESCO. There were representatives from more than 12 countries, including Cambodia, China, India, Japan, Korea, Laos, Mongolia, Union of Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Vietnam explaining the importance and the meaning of this event and wishing it to be a complete success. Additionally, Supreme Patriarch Reverend Bor Krai from Cambodia, Secretary General of the World Fellowship of Buddhists, Mr. Phalop Tiari from Thailand, Professor Kodo Matsunami of Japan Buddhist Federation, the Honorable President of the Pure Land Association of Australia, Mr. Graham Lyle, AM. President of Inner Trip Reyukai International, Mr. Asakawa of Japan, Rector Dharma Kosajarn of Mahachulalongkorn Rahavidyalaya University of Thailand, President and Venerable Jungdae Jin of De Sun Jin Riho Order of Korea, President and Venerable Bante Chao Chu of the Los Angeles Buddhist Union from the United States, President and Venerable Kakuhan Inami of the Japan Buddhist Conference. President Claudine Shinoda of the European Buddhist Union from Italy, President and Venerable Chang Un Chul of the Won Buddhist Order from Korea, the Sri Lanka representative from the United States, 
and Venerable Thich Tin Han, representing the president of the World Linsan Buddhist Congregation from France, all sincerely congratulated this unprecedented religious event held by UNESCO. Afterwards, there was the ceremony of passing the candles. Candle in Buddhism symbolizes wisdom, meaning the burning of oneself to give light to the others. The ceremony of passing the candles symbolizes the profound meaning of passing the learning from masters to students in endless succession. On stage, the religious masters from all over the world sincerely lit the candles of compassion and wisdom. In the audience, all the participants, along with the masters, prayed for world peace. It is just as Dr. Emoto said, love and gratitude are the nucleus of the universe. Only true and sincere love can resolve all the conflicts, collisions, The three-day UNESCO conference in celebration of the 2,550th anniversary of Vesak successfully closed. During this unprecedented religious event held at UNESCO, through keynote speakers, discussion panels, and cultural exhibitions, the message inherent in the spirit of the sacred teachings of universal compassion, sincere respect, and humility resonated strongly with the representatives of various countries, religions, and friends around the world. Goodwill and sincerity shared by the participants could be felt throughout the conference's three days. As stated by the Deputy Permanent Delegate of Thailand to UNESCO, these three days showed signs of auspiciousness that UNESCO has never experienced before, especially for its content and the orderly way the programs were presented. Thus, we come to realize that, to keep the Buddha's wisdom alive, and to